You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. Welcome, thieves. You think you can come into my library and take my magical grimoire with impunity? I paid a high price for it. Do not expect to leave the building with it unharmed. In order to leave the library, you'll have to dispel the illusions I placed in every room. Oh sure, your little band of magicians can count on the help of the ungrateful grimoire to run away, but in your impotence, you didn't watch for potential troubles within your ranks. One of your fellow magicians fell victim to one of my spells and is now scheming to destroy your little group from the inside. Soon, you'll lose confidence in each other, and end up lost forever. Welcome to Tabletop Arcane. This is Justin, and I am bringing you a review of Obscurio. This is published by Liblude. It is a two to eight player game. Plays in about 45 minutes. It says, and has an MSRP of $49.99. Now, this is a spiritual successor to Mysterium, which we did a prior review on. And if you'd like to check that out, you can click the link at the end of the video, or... If you're listening through a podcast, check our podcast library for it. First impressions of Obscurio, I found it very engaging, I found it very interesting, and it took, at first, that Mysterium next steps in what I was looking for, editing a little bit of the gameplay and making it a little bit more interesting. Art and everything is still super fantastic compared to everything else. Fetching box that has this beautiful, like, magician's library or wizard's library sort of look on it. And the idea is you're trying to get this magical book through there, and one player is going to play that magical book and give clues to everybody to help figure out how to get to the next room and eventually, hopefully, get out of the place. In a four or more player game, there is that hidden traitor mechanic attached to the game where they're trying to make the players lose instead of being fully co op. We're now at the semi co op level. But that is eliminated in that two and three player variants where there's some rules edits where that just won't work very well. There's some nice mechanics in Mysterium that uh, were kept, and that's that art on the cards are very vague and can be interpreted in many different ways. And then compounded, there's a timer and some secrets. And even the trader gets a little bit of a hand in what's going on in there. Let's dive into what Obscurio does well. So it takes the fully co-op Mysterium game and turns into a semi-co-op game. Which, if your group is a fan of tension or whodunit sort of thing, or have a little bit of a different objective between players, it's going to do that for you. Likewise, as now you're a group of wizards wandering through rooms and trying to escape... Your guesses are not necessarily individualized, but more group-based, and there's only one that is the correct door to pass through, opposed to finding the person, place, object, or weapon that Mysterium has. So it turns up the gameplay enough where it does feel like a spiritual successor, but not a clone of Mysterium. One other thing that I really do enjoy about Obscurio is the fact that there are a time penalty... As the group deliberates with what the grimoire has given you, every time you delay, there's a potential new challenge in your next vision. The trap tokens that can pop up based on how much time it took you to deliberate on the last one really helps give a little bit more tension to the game and a little bit of sense of urgency, which I think is a fantastic option. And if there is more deliberation, maybe the next one's just tougher. And you get cool effects like the magnetic butterfly clips that the Grimoire can use to point out particular things in an image may or may not be used. There is the option of a seventh room, or maybe one isn't revealed. Uh, Sometimes the traitor is powered up, depending on the trap. Or you only get to have to put like some sort of uh, magical mist or a red filter over the colors so you get a lot of different options in that and that's where the gameplay gets really mixed up in such a way that it is not a carbon copy each time and I love it for that now some of the things that Obscurio does not so great is that traitor mechanic seems to be there and thematically makes sense in gameplay it's 
challenging for the trader to really throw the group off its trail unless you have a really good trader a player because there's so many cohesion tokens that the game starts with that the group can typically find their way through, at least in the groups, the times that I've played, can find their way through without having the trader muck up the plans too much. Another opportunity that Obscurio is a bit of a con against it is because the Grimoire uses these circle art cards, which are very cool and unique, they're also so unique that you cannot take the Mysterium cards and introduce Deuce those into your Obscurio game, likewise Dixit, or any other of these uh, tarot size abstract art cards, you could do with Mysterium. And by doing it with Mysterium, it'd give you a bigger variety of uh, potential in those clues given, especially if you play a lot of games. So that innate expandability isn't here in Obscurio. I feel the sacrifice of that wasn't for the benefit of having these circle art cards. Overall, Obscurio is a very easy, fun game to learn. You do have that hidden trader semi-co-op feel to it, so if that is something your group would enjoy, definitely take a look at Obscurio. If you'd rather look at a more fully co-op version of this mystery clue-giving game, then I would definitely recommend Mysterium over it. My personal game group definitely does gravitate towards Mysterium, because they're not as much of a fan of that hidden trader semi-co-op feeling. There are avenues to eliminate that and play the game fully co-op, so we've done that on occasion, but that is more of that house rule adjustment that we like to do with Obscurio. I hope this has given you some enlightened aspects of what Obscurio is all about, and wipe away that fog of whether this game is for you or not. Be sure to follow us on our social media, that's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, get those notifications so you know when new content comes up. Follow the Instagram page for our Game A Day Challenge. As always, thanks for listening, and happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, produced by Justin Taylor. This episode is hosted by Justin Taylor. Mixing and editing by Richard Geese. Original theme by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. Check the description for this episode's featured background music. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. And leave us a review if you would. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.